Hello, welcome to Endor, an N-Gage model railway on a door. Over several weeks I've been gradually continuing with animating a ratio signal kit, getting as far as connecting it to a servo motor. In my previous video on this topic I'd successfully linked the signal arm to a balance lever, which itself was operated by a rod, but it was all very prone to falling apart, so most of my time since then has been spent trying to do this in a way that stays together and which I can repeat. To hold the balance lever reliably against the signal post I tried to make a little bracket with a similar triangular shape that I've seen in photos of signals. As with the balance lever I cut an approximate rectangle out from the top of a drinks can and filed the front part to the right shape, then bent the rest into shape. Placed loosely on the signal mast it looked about right to me. Drilling a hole for a rod to go through the back of it was tricky because I couldn't steady the drill with two hands, so inevitably the hole ended up off centre. It then proved extremely difficult to get a brass rod through the holes in the balance lever, bracket and post. I did manage it, but the process wasn't going to be practical to repeat after painting and gluing various parts, so if I do end up adding any kind of bracket it's going to be purely cosmetic. I found I could crush the end of the 0.3mm brass rod that the balance lever pivots on, and then tightly fold the flat bit. This is easy to do and works but the brass can only take folding once, and with very few tweaking adjustments afterwards before it fatigues and snaps off. Quite a few pictures I've seen of GWR signals have balance levers that aren't straight, so I tried to make one like that. I found it much more difficult to make. The first challenge was drilling holes in the right places, and then cutting and filing afterwards was also very tricky because I couldn't support more than half of the lever. It took more than one attempt, but I eventually had something I thought looked the right shape. However, I hadn't really paid enough attention to space needed for the balance weight, and since plenty of balance levers are straight, I settled on making straight ones. So, I made another straight one, this time with lots of space for a balance weight. Making a balance weight also proved difficult. I couldn't find anything that seemed to be the right size already. Track pin heads were the closest, but were too small. So I filed a square piece of aluminium. That took a long time, and I didn't quite get it circular but some more time and patience should get it there. Placed loosely on the balance lever it didn't look far from what I was after, but there's a problem with the levering arrangement here, it's the wrong way around. The weight needs to be on the same side as the rod to the signal arm. The reality of my model is that whatever moves the balance lever is going to both pull and push the lever into position, but on a real signal the cable to the signal lever can only pull the balance lever. It's the balance weight that brings the lever back down and takes up slack in the cable. Signals must fail safe, so if the signal cable snapped for example, then the signal would have to automatically return to its danger position. So I'd have to make yet another balance lever. After looking back at signal photos again I noticed the balance lever pivot point is usually a long way off centre, and after incorporating that layout it was easier to get a working lever that had space for a balance weight. Sadly, the balance weight I'd already spent ages making vanished. It hasn't reappeared, so I'll need to make a replacement at some point, but by this stage I'd had enough of cutting and filing tiny bits of aluminium. Mostly in my video edits I only want to show the interesting parts of what I do, but the vast majority of the time spent shaping little components looks like this. At some point I decided to switch to a new signal kit. The original one had become quite damaged and I didn't want to end up developing techniques that were specific to that one. This time I didn't ream the hole in the signal arm, just the one at the top of the post, and was able to get the provided pin through without snapping the arm. One of the things I did was place the arm over a small hole in a block of wood, so that most of it was well supported. The result is a tight fit, which means the arm turns reliably with the pin. I left most of the length of the pin in place so I could easily reattach the arm and have it reliably stay in place while I work on other bits of the mechanism. I know from the first signal that I'll be able to attach the backlight shade with a similar tight fit eventually, but I don't want to keep taking it on and off because I think that will loosen the fit and quite likely break it. With the signal arm easy to detach and reattach, I also kept a lot of extra length on the positioning rod that goes through it. The rods can be difficult to attach to the balance lever, and need to be held firmly in place at the balance lever. I found I can put a U-bend at the balance lever end of the rod, which keeps it reliably attached, but actually insert it into the balance lever from the signal arm end. With the first signal I'd ended up using a mixture of 0.2 and 0.3mm brass rods, with holes being various diameters, some of them from drill bits whose diameter I didn't know. 
I found with the second signal that keeping everything at 0.3mm works best. Parts that need to rotate are still able to quite easily, but they don't wobble about. In theory, the same would be the case if everything were 0.2mm, but I found the 0.2mm brass rod much more likely to snap when having tight bends put into it, and I also ended up snapping yet another 0.2mm drill bit. 0.2 looks closer to the right scale size, but it proved too fragile. It turned out that a 0.3mm hole through the plastic post base holds the brass rod tightly enough that nothing else is needed to keep it from working loose, which is helpful. Another thing worth noting is that the rod linking the signal arm with the balance lever is extremely difficult to bend in exactly the right place, such that the signal arm ends up level when the balance lever is level. I found that I need to attach the arm, rod and lever before drilling a hole through the mast for the lever to rotate on. It's easy enough to replace the balance lever with another one, but I think it would take a lot of trial and error if the rod snapped and needed replacing. Having now established a satisfactory, if still fiddly, assembly approach, I turned my attention to motorising it. Experimenting in situ on the railway would be difficult, so I made a mock-up of the door's size and structure using some spare hardboard and wood offcuts. The door also has some kind of honeycomb cardboard structure between its top and bottom, but it wasn't necessary to simulate that. I've had some servo motors for quite a while, these Tower Pro SG90 digital ones. I've seen lots of similar ones on Amazon, but with different branding. Those are counterfeits. On moral grounds, I won't buy them. But also, developing a product takes an investment, as does manufacturing it to be compliant with various regulations that are there to keep us all safe. To mount the servos under the railway's door, I made some brackets by bending 0.8mm thick brass strips that I already had. It was quicker and cheaper than ordering some servo brackets from eBay. I want the option to make fine positioning adjustments, so if that's needed I can mill the screw holes I drilled in the brass to an oval shape to let them slide back and forth before I tighten the screw. It had been 9 months since I first tried learning how to control a servo motor from a Raspberry Pi Pico, and I hadn't done anything with them since then, so I had to do a little revision. I've now bought several electrical bits and pieces from reputable suppliers, and one of the big benefits of buying genuine components is decent datasheet documentation, something else that takes time, and therefore money, to produce. The datasheet for the servo says it needs 4.8 to 6 volts to power it, which colour cable is which, and what to do with the control signal. The Raspberry Pi Pico has a 5 volt output, so I just used that for experimentation. When I install these on the layout, I'll use a separate 5 volt supply. Any of the general purpose input-output pins on the Pico can be used to send a pulse width modulation signal. In MicroPython, that's done using the PWM class. The servo datasheet says the signal needs to have a frequency of 50 Hz. There's a function to set that in the code. Things got a little more tricky for actually controlling the servo's position. The datasheet says that a pulse range should be from about 1 millisecond for minus 90 degrees through to about 2 milliseconds for plus 90 degrees. That's called the duty cycle. The MicroPython PWM class has functions to control the duty by setting a duration directly in nanoseconds. From 1 millisecond to 2 milliseconds I was getting a lot less than 180 degrees of rotation, but with some experimentation I found the full range of rotation lies between around 0.3 to 2.4 milliseconds. These servos can apparently move 2.5 kilograms at 1 centimeter from the rotation point of the arm so they're easily strong enough to tear my signal apart. Before connecting one to my signal, I found the range of duty values that moved it about the right amount. To connect it, I pulled its arm off and just bent the brass rod at 90 degrees to the base and what I thought was 90 degrees to the servo, but it turned out to be more like 45 degrees. That still just about fitted onto the servo arm, but in trying to fiddle with its position, I seemed to activate the servo a bit and it moved several degrees beyond where I wanted it. The brass rods absorbed the strain and nothing got broken. I did then add an extra bend to the rod connecting to the servo. Once it was connected back up to the computer, the rotation values I'd put in before were all wrong, because the servo had moved, so it took a bit more fine-tuning to get the right range of motion. Having found the horizontal position and what looked like about 60 degrees down, I started on some primitive timing. At this stage, I just wrote the code to run for a set duration and move the arm proportionally from one position to the other, with setting it to danger being a lot quicker than clearing it. I didn't write any deliberate pauses into my code, so this loop is executing as fast as it could, and should therefore result in as smooth a movement as possible, but I didn't think the movement of the signal arm was super smooth. 
With a frequency of 50 Hz, the servo can only receive a new duty cycle once every 20 milliseconds. I think my code loop is likely to be executing more quickly than that. It certainly would be on a normal computer, so I suspect I'm just at the limit of either the MicroPython on a Raspberry Pi Pico, or at the limit of what the servo can do. All that said, it looks good enough, I think. Once this is on the layout and part of its normal operation, I don't think I'll notice the minor stuttering. Something that does annoy me a bit is that there's still a bit too much play in how all the signal bits fit together. I can't get the servo to consistently return the signal arm to what looks completely horizontal. Things didn't end well for this signal. I was repositioning it to get a better camera shot of the balance lever working, but it toppled over and snapped the signal post. I might try gluing it back together, with a rod added inside for rigidity, but for now I'm taking a break from physical signal making. The next steps when I come back to it will be painting everything and refining the motion of the arm. I'd like it to look like it's bouncing back into position when set to danger, so I've got some physics modelling to do in my code. I'm in two minds about whether or not to have another go at adding an LED. I've bought some slightly larger ones than I tried in my previous signal video, but I think it might actually look out of place for a daytime railway. I doubt the oil lamps burn bright enough to be obvious in broad daylight. They might not even have been lit during the day. I've also got to decide whether or not I risk having signals on the layout yet, given that I've got all of the scenery still to do. But I do like how they look, and I think they'll add a bit of operational fun. That's all for now. Bye bye.